We're delighted to have as our commencement speaker today, Mr. Joe Lockhart, founding partner and managing director of Glover Park Group. Mr. Lockhart also served as chief spokesman and senior advisor to President Bill Clinton, senior advisor to John Kerry and his presidential campaign, and national press secretary for the Clinton-Gore campaign. An award-winning journalist and political strategist, Mr. Lockhart has also worked for CNN and ABC News. It's my great pleasure to welcome Joe Lockhart. Well, thank you all very much, President Sotkamp, uh, the, uh, the, the board, particularly my good friend, Maddie Deininger, and uh, the faculty. Uh, let me join in uh, congratulating the parents, particularly the mothers here today. As I was sitting up here, I was reflecting on my own mother, who uh, believed that education was everything. So much so, when I called her very excited, having been offered a job by the President of the United States, she said, that's great, son. It'll look good on your law school application. <laughs> I was 36 at the time. Um, sorry, Mom. Uh, uh, Lauren and the graduates, uh, congratulations. Uh, it's an honor for me to speak here on this wonderful day. I know it's a day of bittersweet transition for you all, a day of new beginnings. And if you know what's good for you, it's a day to go through your Facebook pictures, one by one, hitting delete. <laughs> As you start the next adventure of your lives, trust me when I tell you, pictures from the island, and from this particularly Thursday night at JD's are not your friend. <laughs> now, I was a little surprised uh, when I got the invitation to, uh, to speak here, particularly given my own academic history. Don't get me wrong, I love college. In fact, senior year was the best three years of my life. <laughs> Plus, it's been a while since I've been in the spotlight. As, as, as some of you know, uh, I was the press secretary to President Bill Clinton during the 1990s. Day after day, I stood at a podium like this and took relenting, unrelenting questions about creating 21 new million jobs and peace around the world. Oh, and there was that little thing called impeachment. <laughs> but most of you were probably too young to remember. Don't worry about it. It was no big deal. Trust me. <laughs> but then I realized maybe I have something to offer graduates today. Be uh, because standing behind the podium, I had to be ready for anything. I had to be able to handle the hardest issues and the toughest questions. I had to be on my game, think on my feet, and remember why I was there and what was important. And the truth is, that's a lot like life. For instance, like it or not, you're about to get some tough questions from your parents. Like this one. Now, son, what are you planning to do with that art history degree? <laughs> I can help. Answer. Well, Dad, at a time of both great opportunities and serious challenges, when our democratic values shine like a bright beacon around the world, but still face serious threats, both ideological and political, at such a historic time, sorry, Dad, could you repeat the question? <laughs> or this one, when do you plan to get a job? Answer, as I think I've made clear in previous statements, and I'd happy to get a transcript for you, Mom, there are no specific or arbitrary deadlines to this process but let me clearly reiterate that there remains a willingness to pursue an engagement strategy until we reach our mutually agreed objective. <laughs> Finally, the really hard one. Question, if you move back home with us, are you willing to pay your own way? <laughs> now, Mom and Dad, that's an if question. You know I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals with you. <laughs> Mom and Dad, next question. That's, that's not all. I won't sugarcoat what I think most of you already know. You're graduating at a very difficult time. This is a tough economic environment. We're at 10% unemployment. Millions of people have lost jobs. We're coming out of the deepest recession this country has seen since the Great Depression. And the statistics only tell part of the story. Long before this recession hit, we were experiencing a, a radical transformation of our economy. We're going from local to global from an economy rooted in what we build to one based on information and services we provide, from an economy in which people got their first and last job at one company to one where it's common to change jobs a dozen or more times in a career. So each and every one of you are faced with the daunting task of not only finding a good job, but adapting and learning, retraining and remaking yourselves for the next job, the next field, the next opportunity, whatever it may be. 
And, you, so, and so you will be faced with hard questions in your life about how to achieve success, however you define it. But I hope based on my career, I can give you some insight today into what attributes can make you successful. So here goes. First and foremost, whether behind a podium or at a desk, it's important that you're always open to what people are saying, to learning as you go. And this may come as bad news to some of you. That means continuing to be a student for the rest of your life. Good news for some, maybe. While formal education may end for many today, the economy now requires that your education never ceases. Success means constantly acquiring new skills because there is no accurate way to predict where the economy and jobs are going. The best long-term plan must, just might be a series of really good short-term plans. Second, you need to be persistent. You'll face a lot of competition wherever you go when you leave this room today. No is and shouldn't ever be the end of a discussion. It's merely the first step in a negotiation. That's how I got my first job in politics some 30 years ago. I wanted to work for President Carter, who was running for an election in 1980, and I called his press secretary every day for two months to try to get a job interview. I got to know this woman's assistant very well. I talked to her every day for three months, um, but to no avail because I couldn't get the interview. Sometimes you also have to be a little sneaky. I found out from talking to the assistant and asking her that she got off every night at 7 o'clock. Uh, I figured her boss worked later, so I changed my tactics for three straight nights I called her boss five minutes after I knew she, her assistant had left the office. And for three straight nights, the, one, the press secretary politely blew me off. And then on the fourth day, she called me. And I'll never forget, she said, anyone annoying enough to get through to me three days in a row deserves a job. So I did start in that, and that's how my political career started. Third, you'll need to be flexible. Unfortunately, there's no big billboard on the side of the highway or an email from the career ferry telling you that something big is coming, some great opportunity just for you. But if you keep your eyes and your mind open, opportunities will present themselves. Today's workplace punishes, I can't or I don't do that, and rewards, I can figure that out. Let me tell one other story to illustrate that point. About 20 years ago, I answered an ad for a TV producer's job in London. After several sessions, several interviews, I realized I'd gone to the wrong interview and was interviewing for an on-camera position as their, uh, their business reporter. Not only have I never been on television before, I didn't know a thing about business. Now, in the fine English tradition, the final interview was in a pub. And when the bosses hit the restroom, I grabbed the first guy I interviewed with and set him straight, told him I had no experience. And he thought about it. And he agreed that my resume was a little light on that subject, but told me not to worry about it. And when the bosses came back, he announced and said, quote, Joe was just assuring me that his complete lack of experience wasn't going to be a problem. They all slapped me on the back, and I was on the air starting the next day. <laughs> now, I won't pretend that the first few weeks were easy, and I thank God YouTube wasn't invented yet. <laughs> In fact, I was terrible at the job, but I never regretted taking it. That experience helped me every day facing the cameras at the White House. Fourth, you need to be resilient. I can confidently predict that everyone in this room, all of you graduates, will make mistakes, will experience failures, some small, some big. It's hard to pick, for me, which one to highlight, because there are so many. But let me talk about what I think is the most spectacular. It was my first foreign trip with, with President Clinton. We were in Moscow. We had made it through some several, was through very uh, tough days. And on the last night, I decided I could treat myself and go out. I thought I had it all planned out. We weren't leaving until 6 in the morning, so getting in at 5.30 a.m. was not a problem except that I made one mistake and I decided to sit on the bed for a minute and promptly fell asleep. Now, you know you've made a big mistake when you've missed Air Force One. <laughs> You're stuck in Russia. You don't speak the language. And you don't have a passport. <laughs> oh, and the president is calling from the plane asking where, where you are. I did learn a lot that day, including some Russian. I remember, Vatya Papa, which means, boy, am I screwed. <laughs> but trust me, and seriously, you'll learn more from your mistakes than you ever will from your successes. Fifth, uh, and probably most importantly, is faith. Faith in yourself. There is a reason you're here today surrounded by your proud family and, and your good friends. You'll be told over the next few years that you can't, that you don't have the experience, that your ideas won't work. Don't believe them. Remember today, remember being here today, and remember the faith you had in yourself getting through college, 
and, that, and the faith in your ability to, to succeed. The final point I'd like to make is about being engaged in your community, your church, your family, and as a citizen. It's all part of what makes you successful. And I want to finish on focusing on the citizen part and make a small plug on the idea of public service. Every day we hear another frightening story about the threat posed to us by the big and scary entity we call the government. The fact of the matter is our government and our country will always be nothing more or nothing less than what we make it. At the end of the day, our society and our way of life are defined by what you and I create as citizens. It will rise or fall on what each and every one of us con con uh, contributes. And these difficult times should remind us that there's nothing inevitable about our nation succeeding and continuing to lead the world. This is the challenge, the real challenge, the real question for your generation. The enemy, as I see it, is, a, is the negative, cynical, and self-interested uh, minority on the fringes of our political spectrum. If you as today's college graduates are alienated by government and leave our future to those interests, our future will look dramatically different than our past. Your cynicism is often seen as cool, apathy is easy. And rising to the demands of real citizenship can be hard and frustrating. But it is worth it, and it is necessary. John Kennedy told students at the University of Michigan 50 years ago that our democracy depended on your willingness to contribute part of your life to this country. President Obama was back at Michigan just last week speaking to graduates and renewed that call. He said, what is certain, what has always been certain, is the ability to shape our own destiny. This is what makes us different. This is what makes us Americans. The task is now in your hands, as is the answer to the question posed at this university a half a century ago about whether a free society can still compete. If you are willing, as past generations were willing, then I, like President Kennedy, believe we can because I believe in you. I couldn't agree more with Presidents Kennedy and President Obama. My generation does believe in you, and much more importantly, we're counting on you. Yes, and you will face tough questions. You'll need to be open to what the world has to offer. You'll need to be persistent, resilient. But most of all, you'll need to believe in who you are and how far you've come. Getting to this point in your lives hasn't been easy, and soon you'll face challenges you can scarcely imagine. But you are ready. You are ready for the tests that await you. You are ready to help improve your lives and our world for the better. So congratulations. Enjoy and relish today. You've earned it. Thank your parents, particularly your mothers on Mother's Day. And when you wake up tomorrow, get after shaping your future the same way you attacked and conquered academic life over the last four years. I like to remember this in my work life, and I hope you remember this, from New Jersey's poet laureate Bruce Springsteen's words as you enter the real world. You gotta prove it all night, every night. Thank you very much, and good luck, graduates.